Welcome to Real Estate 360 with real estate expert, Ken Renner. Ken, we have are certainly living in some interesting times right now, unprecedented with the coronavirus, uh, the amazing things that are happening in the market. But we're here to focus on the on some of the good stuff. Yeah, well, some, you know, it was the just, silver lining. That silver lining. It was just two weeks ago. We were sitting in the same uh, office here, which is actually an essential service because you are a radio broadcaster. That's right. So That's we right. can do this, and we are six feet apart. No. Uh, but we were talking about it. that was just the day that they canceled South by Southwest, just two weeks ago. Yeah, right. And that was before. Now all of a sudden, the whole world's changed. But you know, the whole thing about it is that the, the silver lining is what I want to focus on because there's so much negative news out there everywhere you go. No matter what you turn on, TV, your phone, everything is just negative news but I'm an optimist always have been an optimist my wife uh, says I'm glad I'm married to an optimist and the reason is because optimists live longer yeah uh, it's proven uh, but I want to talk a little bit about the, um, the the being on the optimistic side and the silver lining of things uh, that we can focus on because what you focus on expands it does and mm-hmm. you've, you've known this and 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 if the if you keep focusing on the negative media you, it's going to send you into a tizzy and you know you might i've seen a lot of mope, moping people moping around here um but you know i, I like to look I've, I've got faith in the american america i got faith in and believe in the american financial system i've got mm-hmm. you know i got faith and believe in even the, uh, the 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 monetary even on our money it says in god we trust mm-hmm. you know um not to get religious about it but i mean we can either live in fear or we can live in faith and so every every piece of uh, every piece of currency that we have says in god we trust yeah you know there's one thing there's an old saying you're better stop living in the problem and start living in the solution Exactly, and that's and, what we're going to talk right. about to, today because it's uh, it's really uh, this is a time where we get to get to have a little bit of a timeout. You know, we're on <laughs> the shelter, uh, all our kids are at home, and everything like this. And it's been actually a blessing because we've been able to, you know, get to know our. our I've got a nine year old, and I've got a twenty year old, and you know, the the twenty year old was supposed to do South by South by Southwest. She had a showcase and everything, and you know where she's at right now. She's she's in the studio recording. That girl Working. does not stop. Yeah. yeah, and it's inspiring to me. It inspires me. She's teaching. She She's a teach school te- or a um, uh, music teacher too. She's doing remote uh, teaching from her room right. with her iPhone. Uh, uh, the sc- and it really ge- it's inspiring because it gives the kids that she's teaching a little bit of that security, a little bit of that uh, continuity, normalcy, that been, normalcy. That and you know, been people are, are starting to engage in technology that's mm-hmm. been out for a while. Right, Zoom, Zoom. has been. Around. <laughs> I read, I saw an article the other day, the <laughs> the billion dollar company you've never heard of until yeah. coronavirus. I've been using Zoom for years. I, I know I love Zoom. Yeah, so. I do too. And now it's really people are embracing it now. Yeah, which is good. Yeah, so you know it's a good time for a timeout to get to know the kids. Um, it's a good time to reevaluate your goals. I mean, when we're in so busy, you're, you're always so busy, yeah. running and gunning, as yeah. we call it here in Texas, running and gunning. <laughs> <laughs> and and it's time to like sit down and re- take a timeout and reevaluate and uh, look at your goals. I wrote a book on goals. In fact, if you want a free copy of my book, uh, Power Goals, I'd be glad to send it to you. Just email me or text me. Um, you know, look at your. We've just had a financial advisor in here doing a podcast. Look at your paperwork. I mean. Is your all your stuff in order? Yeah, uh, your wills, your 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 you got enough life insurance. You've got you know, how, how the mortgages. We'll talk a little bit about the interest rates here in a second. Um, uh, look at your stocks. I mean, don't stare at the fact that they just uh, dove, you know, twenty <laughs> percent. <laughs> but um, you know, but also time to reconsider. Maybe I shouldn't have had so much money in stocks. You know, maybe I should have had more hard assets. I seem um, to remember someone recently saying <laughs> that you might want to get some money out of the stock market. I think it was. You. Yeah, it was me. Yeah, yeah. Well, we we talk about crazy markets. Yeah. So I was doing a presentation in Southern California, and um, you're going to put some of those slides up that uh, we talked about. Was uh, I put on the uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average and how it does definitely have some adjustments along the way here, um, and and that don't have all your eggs in one basket, and and, and transferring some of those assets into uh, into into a, a real hard assets like real estate and other commodities mm-hmm. and things like that. And I I told. I remind my clients that went to that presentation because they're kind of whining because like, oh, well, part of my down payment was coming from one of my stocks and it's already tanked. And I'm saying, don't you remember I said something about that a month ago? Right. But what I like about Austin, Texas real estate is this is going back uh, to the early 90s um, and when I first moved here. And you can see this chart um, actually shows this is from Texas A&M University. Um, 
is that even during the apocalypse of 2008 and the dot-com bust, our values, our median price values, just pretty much just bounced along. It's been a very nice upward trend as opposed to the heart monitor that we have right, right. Uh, with, the, with the, the Dow Jones. So I've, I've used this presentation um, uh, and these charts many, multiple times. It gets people to open up their eyes uh, to, to the market. Uh, same thing with, with uh, the crazy market and real estate out in the Bay Area. This is another chart that I have here. Sandy, this little three bedroom, one bath, one car garage sold for 1.45 million actually that was my client that sold it that looks like the house i grew up in in merced california yeah it does yeah, yeah. it does yeah I, actually i was born uh, in san mateo which is in the same town yeah. this is uh and that the house that i born in was born in was worth 1.61 million dollars right now wow uh, my dad paid 17k for it that's about what my dad paid like 20 grand <laughs> 19, in 1972 1963 yeah, yeah. <laughs> but this is what you get in in uh, Austin, Texas. Yeah. But this guy didn't buy this house. He sold this, and he and this is what I turned it into: is these yeah. nine houses, nine brand new single family houses, and this is still going on today. The, there are values have not dropped. Are and and yes, there's probably going to be some ramifications due to the fact that people have lost their jobs, and God bless them. But um, the bottom line is, we we're, this is going to be a temporary thing, as it always was. 2008 was a temporary, and 9/11 was temporary. It, it's a temporary setback. And like we were talking about uh, uh, before the show, we also think when they take a deep dive that some of the some of the powers that be that run their that own these huge portfolios in the stock market are going to totally benefit. Yeah, they yeah. it's like a bargain. So my suggestion is like, don't panic, don't be selling your stocks, uh, you know, don't be, don't be running out and, um, you know, <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, hoarding toilet paper, you know. So, um, the bottom line is the silver line is we get to know our kids, you know, yeah. get to hang out, uh, do some things that that uh, we would of course take walks down the trail in the park. Um, uh, my nine-year-old's learning how to play music. You know what I'm doing? Instrument. I'm taking yeah. uh, I'm taking Spanish lessons. Exactly. I was going to exactly say that. I how so do I, you do that? What, it was uh, app, it's uh, a, it's an app, and you just download it, and it's simple Spanish lessons, and it's kind of cool because you can say what time is best for you to take you know your lesson, and you pick a time and number of days, and my class is at six o'clock every morning. On my bucket list was to speak, uh, learn how to speak Spanish. Yeah, and, do it. It's really yeah, cool. I mean, that's Babble. Awesome. Babble. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. So there you go. Um, and once again, it was going going back to. Um, I think it was um, Babble. <laughs> where <laughs> it might be something else. You keep talking. Well, I'll shoot, let you know. shoot me that. Shoot I me will. That. You got it. You got my my uh, text. Yep. So, but also one thing that we're doing is uh, planning a new business. I mean, our businesses. Mm -hmm. You know, while everything else is kind of shaking down, our businesses. For many many years, my clients have asked me to start. Would would I manage their portfolio of of, of real estate, sure. uh, their properties, because they want me to do it, and we manage our own portfolio of properties. But we've been just so busy selling and acquiring helping people acquire properties that we just didn't have the bandwidth to set, set that up so now that we have a little bit of a lull in in activity this is great for us to do the, all the planning get all the software get and you know get all the right people the team and everything in place so that's one of the things that um that that we've been putting off for a long time and then we're uh, jumping back into one thing we also when we're talking about real estate is look at your interest rates right now we talked about this two weeks ago mm -hmm. uh they have tanked at 3.25 percent or thereabouts for an owner occupied house they they bumped up during this uh you know during the latest stock market uh frenzy but now they're right back down to three and a half three and a quarter percent and so maybe it's time to refinance yeah uh maybe re -adjust, maybe pull some cash out and pay off some consumer debt uh, you know, there's the, uh, it's definitely, if you want to talk about interest, I used to own a mortgage company for many years, so I can talk interest rates and mortgages and when it makes sense to do it and when it doesn't. Um, nice thing about real estate, you know, we talk about the three basic uh, needs that you have is food, shelter, and wa uh, food, sh uh, shelter, and clothing, right? Okay. Well, I can think of one more. You got to have, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what is it? <laughs> I, I, family show. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, shelter, you, you, to store your food and your, your clothing, you got to have shelter. So. Right. Uh, you got to live somewhere. And so even though we're on this uh, lockdown, which is actually good for real estate because you got to live somewhere, most people are working from home, so you got got a home to work from, mm -hmm. um, is that the, the, the shutdown is actually shut down in Travis County, all the building. Yeah, what, is that, what effect is ago. that going to have long term? Well, we're in a housing shortage. Yeah. So there, people are going to have to live somewhere, and they keep moving here, especially from the higher pla higher price places in the nation. Um, they're looking for more affordable living, regardless. Even now, they're like, okay, well, how do we how do we how do we consolidate? And th 
those that own real estate are to our landlords our, our investors are going to be able to provide housing for them so uh, fortunately most of ours um, are in Williamson County or Bell County which is not uh, which is not they're not shut down but Travis is right. and that's gonna that's gonna put pressure on the housing market of an already low inventory of like we talked about it's one therefore point, driving up prices driving up prices and also uh, lowering vacancies yeah which is the number one thing our clients are looking for well, i don't want an empty house that's the last the first thing they say is uh, the how long is it going to be vacant and so right now we we last week in the in the three counties here they had 665 uh homes leased in one week wow so we're not slowing down at all um, as far as that's going, you got to live somewhere. And also found out uh, in Williamson County too, where I live, uh, real estate is considered an essential business, like radio, uh, like medical, and things mm-hmm. like that. And so we're able to go ahead and and continue showing properties and doing our open houses. And a lot of our houses are brand new vacant properties, which is also good because we can do what's called a ghost listing, where our open house, I call it ghost open house, or uh, people can self guide tour, so they can. We don't even have to get in the car and drive over there. We say, go to the house. I've got a process of letting you into the house, and then and then they lock it up and they leave. So they can actually look at properties, and you can't do that with an occupied house. Uh, so um, we're always looking at our, our, our home prices are below the median price. And as I sh- showed that chart that uh, you'll put on the screen, that the median price always does well in in Austin it, for the last forty years. Right. It's not gonna. It's a it's a safe asset. To park some of your money and and it grows over time and guess what somebody else pays off the mortgage for you that's even that's the best part yeah somebody else pays off the debt yeah over time uh it's awesome and also looking at our sub markets now some of the markets that we are uh are investing in uh, a large chunk of our investors are investing in markets that are not based on high tech and and um and government like our city here um it's close by to austin but it, it, this this sub markets are based off of medical medical research distribution these those business are thriving right mm-hmm. now uh and military and that's obviously not going to go away. So we, right. we're, we're we're actually those areas are benefiting from this crisis, and not saying that it's <laughs> using the word benefiting, but the, we need those services. We need the you need the the largest hospital and um, and the VA hospital. These these are going to be required services, and so the people that are servicing that got to live somewhere. Right. So you know it's funny. Um, did you see the article? About um, the guy that founded Dyson, you know Dyson vacuums, hair dryers. Uh-huh, yeah, they just, you know he's a multi billionaire, and he he and his company uh, developed a ventilator in ten days. Nice. Yeah, See, and, and they can scale yeah. it, they can build it, and so what I'm saying is necessity is innovation. the mother of invention. In- innovation, right? And, and then Dyson just switch it from a vacuum cleaner. I, I guess so. Vacuum. Smart people. Yeah, I was driving down uh, Mopac, and I was looking at Abbott Labs, which yeah. has been there forever. Parking lots full. Oh, I bet it is. Yeah, because yeah. they they do the uh, they they medical. This country's and, full of of good people. Uh, Dyson's an English guy, but the world is full of good smart people that yeah, that yeah. will start. Focusing on something else temporarily yeah. to help the greater good. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the, the the faith we have in American resiliency, mm-hmm. and this too shall pass. You know, and and that's one of the reasons why I'm looking at it being the optimist and the silver lining is wow. I've finally been able to sit down and do a business plan for my property management company because you know what, my clients want the security of knowing I'm gonna I'm gonna steward their properties, right? And as opposed to just handing it off to somebody who may or may not do a great job, right? And so that's that that brings me a lot of joy and a lot, little more stress for my wife because she's like going, I'm not ready. But it, you know, we've been waiting for this for a long time. Ken Renner, thing. optimist. <laughs> <laughs> and Sandy, you, we just talked about that. You, we were talking about how people live in fear, and you're like, going, I used to be like that. Yeah, it, it does, it's not a good way to live. It, living in fear is not a good way to live. It's, yeah. And it's really, you know, you really over exaggerate your fear. What you're afraid of is not as bad as it really is. Oh, remember, you know, 9 11 or even the 2008 apocalypse of the financial industry? I mean, the news was just. Don't hammer, watch it. I think everyone should it. limit themselves right now to 30 minutes of news a day. Uh, you can that. watch the nightly news, which, by the way, the nightly news numbers, the ratings are off the charts. I mean, that's been beaten down over the years. Right. But people are tuning in. 
at 5.30 to the network news. Lester, I think Holt, you, yeah, Nora, I think if you just get your them. required information, yeah. but not like focus on it. And then, I mean, anytime some kind of new thing comes up, we reach for our phone. Really? Yeah, you know, don't like, do that. No, don't, don't do, do it. Do that. Don't do it. Focus on your future. Focus, right. on, focus on your family. Yeah. Focus on your faith. Good stuff, Ken. Thanks. Thank Kenny. you. I think uh, everything you just shared with everyone, take it to heart. Do those things. Things are going to be all right. All right. Ken Renner, 512-423-5626. Text me. Give me a call. I'm here to encourage.